We've been zombies. We've been asleep. That's why it's called the awakening. We are waking up. We are now, quote unquote, woke to what's going on around us. Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial, and if you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about the great awakening that the world and that our species, humankind, is now currently in. Now, uh, I've seen a lot of posts of people saying, oh man, I wish that 2020 would just be over. Can we just get on to 2021? And... Um, I don't think that people are really taking 2020 for what they should be taking it as. And what I see it as, as possibly the greatest awakening that our species could ever have of everything that we're blind to, everything that we're doing wrong, and every opportunity that we personally need to improve upon. And uh, it's kind of, you know, it, it could be, you know, it could be by plan. I don't know. But, you know, if you think about 2020, and to have 2020 vision means that you have perfect vision whenever you go and you get your eyes checked. It just so happens to be 2020. And maybe the reason for that is because we need to see everything that we haven't seen, that we've been blind to, that we have been asleep to, that we have been zombies for. And I think that this year could be the greatest paradigm shift that the world's ever seen. As far as a paradigm is, this is the way that we've always seen the world over here. But over here is what we've been blind to, that we've been needing to see. And now it's so blatantly in front of us that we need to see it and we need to make a change or as a species go extinct. And so we have a couple of things that I want to talk about just in this sense. Um, the first thing is obviously the pandemic, you know, the coronavirus coming in. What did that wake us up to that we've been completely blind to, that we haven't been paying attention to? Okay, the first thing, it's opening our eyes to the fact that we don't take care of the earth. We rape the earth, we pillage the earth, we act like it's just there for us, and we take, 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 take. We don't act like we come from the earth. We don't respect it. We don't give it the, the respect that it needs, but then also at the same time, we don't treat it the way it should be treated. As if, you know, they say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Literally, Every single aspect of you as a human comes from the earth. The air that you breathe, the food that you put into your body, every single aspect of it comes from the earth, no matter how processed that shit is. And then the last part of it, the, besides the food, the air, the water that you drink, every single bit of it comes from the earth. You, whether you realize it or not, are the earth. You are the living, breathing, walking, talking version of the earth. Why don't we take care of it better? So we have the pandemic showing us that we are not taking care of the earth. That's one thing that it's showing us. What else is it showing us? We don't take care of animals. We act like animals are just there for us to eat and that we can just go ahead and we can eat anything that we want. It's all ours to take and we can just take all of it. It's ours. Doesn't matter. Don't take care of it. You know, if you've ever driven by, you know, we just came back from Sedona the other day and we have to drive by dairy farms and it's just cows and cows and cows and cows and cows and they're not taken care of in any sort of way. So you have these animals that are not taken care of in any sort of way. They're not in their natural habitat. Usually they're out eating grass, but they're literally on just these big giant dirt farms and they're given pellets. That's not how they're supposed to be taken care of. That's not the normal thing that they eat. They don't get to walk around like they normally do. So clearly their bodies are not taken care of as much as they're supposed to be. And then people are ingesting the actual dairy that comes from them. So maybe the fact that we're not taking care of animals and the entire coronavirus started from somebody eating an animal that they probably shouldn't have been eating. So you have that to think about. How about the fact that, that we don't take care of our bodies enough, our, our own bodies, you know, by the food that we eat, by the, um, you know, the lack of working out that we might have, by the fact that we're, you know, drinking alcohol or putting something into it that is lowering our immune system. And so therefore, we're not taking care of our bodies as much as we should is what it's showing us. And therefore, our immune systems are now being compromised by what we do, what we think, how we treat ourselves, the food we put into our bodies, the, the lack of working out or the working out that we, we don't do. All of that stuff is now making us more compromised to then get this virus that is spreading across the world. So we have a few things. Number one, we have the way that we treat the earth. 
from the pandemic. It's showing us that we're not treating the earth correctly. Number two, it's showing us that we don't treat animals correctly. We act as if animals don't have a conscience, that they don't know what's going on, that they're not smart enough to understand the shit that we're putting them through and the torture that we put them through. And the third thing is we act like, you know, the third thing is bringing us our awareness to is our bodies and actually what we do with them or the things that we don't do them. So it's making us very aware of those things. So we have, and then we have the food, obviously, that we feed ourselves as well. So that's a few things that it is waking us up to. Our paradigm is shifting of maybe I should pay attention to how we treat the earth. Maybe I should pay attention to how we treat animals. Maybe I should pay attention to how I take care of my body. Maybe I should pay attention to the food that I put into my body. And it's not just about taste or as Joe Rogan likes to call it, mouth pleasure of just sitting there and being like, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and eat this because it tastes good. Not thinking about the fact that it could put extra fat onto my body if I have too much sugar. So it's making us wake up. Why I talk about the great awakening. It's making us wake up to what we're doing because we have been in a zombie state. What else is 2020 making us wake up to? The fact that we have the protests and everything that's going on, the way that we treat each other, the inequality that so blatantly exists that we just act like doesn't exist. We need to wake up to the fact that there are people out there that sometimes need our help, you know, and they, they need to have the equality that we, you know, if, if you're a white person that's in America, you've been treated a way that's been different than other people. Is that fair? No. How do we make it fair? Make sure that everybody has the equal opportunity. It's absolutely ridiculous to think that just because somebody has a different amount of pigment in their skin that they could be treated differently. It's like the Bob Marley quote that, that reminds me of his, his song, War. He says, until the color of a man's skin is of no, oh, until the color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes, I say war. Think about that for a second. Does it matter what color someone's eyes are? Of course it doesn't. So why does it matter what color someone's skin is? It's just their ancestors' adaptation to how much sun they got and what the climate was like. That's really all that it is. It has nothing to do with their intelligence. It has nothing to do with who they are. It's just the color of their skin. So why would somebody, just because of the color of their own skin, have less equality than somebody else? Why would somebody be treated differently than someone else? So we're being woken up to the fact that there are people that we need to stick up for. There are people that we need to have their backs. There are people that we need to march for. There are people that we need to say, you know what, I'm here for you. Whether you need me to go out and march with you or whether you just need me to listen to whatever it is that you got to vent to me, vent to me, I'm all ears and I will not judge you in any sort of way. And that human connection of we should treat others the way that we want to be treated, whether they look like you, whether they don't like you, look like you, You should treat others the way that you want to be treated. It's the golden rule. It's so simple, isn't it? Treat others as you want to be treated. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Why would you treat anybody differently? So maybe it's waking us up to not only the fact that we don't treat the earth right, not only the fact that we don't treat animals right, not only the fact that we don't treat our bodies right, but also to the fact that we don't treat each other right. This paradigm shift that's waking us up And think about this. We've had to sit in our houses for months. Some people are still sitting in their house. They've been there for months. You can't run from yourself when you've been sitting in your house for months. One of the things that I noticed that people like to keep themselves very, very busy. And the reason why they like to keep themselves busy is subconsciously, they don't want to deal with all of the shit that they really truly need to deal with. What is 2020 doing to us? It's making us look at ourselves in the mirror and saying, what do I need to fix about myself and also the world around me? Because we're all in this together. We don't exist without the earth. We don't exist without the animals. We don't exist without our bodies and we don't exist without each other. We're all in this together. It's time for us to wake up. The great awakening, the spiritual awakening of, oh my God, it's not just me. I always say that you're either on self or you're on purpose. Either you're being selfish and you're thinking about yourself and only yourself, or 
you're on purpose and you're thinking about others and you're thinking about the earth, you're thinking about the animals, you're thinking about how you should treat people and what you should do. You know, people always ask me, they're like, why, why did you decide to, you know, I'm probably 95% vegan. The reason why I'm the only other 5% is because sometimes it's hard to go out and eat at certain places and sometimes it's there. I had a very big spiritual awakening during a ayahuasca ceremony where I saw animals being tortured and felt what they felt. And I realized that my entire life I've been, I've been supporting animal cruelty and I've been supporting animal rape because in order to have dairy, you have to continue to keep impregnating the cows over and over and over again. I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to, to gross everybody out that's out there. But I had this big spiritual awakening of I can get all of the nutrients that I need if I'm smart about it from, the, from different types of food. So why would I need to be part of something that tortures and kills animals for our own consumption? Why does something need to die in order for me to eat? I was woken up. Holy shit, I can never unsee what I just saw. I saw it. So then I thought to myself, why don't I just try it for a little while and see how it works? And I realized it wasn't that hard. And I realized that I lost weight doing it. And I realized that my skin cleared up doing it. And I realized that I slept better. And I realized that all of the sore joints and muscles that I had in my body started to go away. And I was like, holy crap, I actually feel better from not eating dead flesh. For me, that was an awakening. And I think in different aspects of every single person that's out there, we're having our great awakening of maybe I should look at the food I eat. Maybe I should look at the way that I treat the earth. Maybe I should look at the way I treat my body. Maybe I should look at the way I treat other people. It's time for us to stop being selfish and wake up to the fact that we're all in this together. There's not a part of the system that can go down, whether it's the earth, the animals, our bodies or each other. There's not a part of that system that can go down and have the entire system continue the run that way it always has been. We need to help each other, every animal that we can, every human that we can, no matter what they look like, no matter what they believe in, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their, their gender, no matter their sexual preference. We need to team up and be together and help people no matter what. We need to listen to people more and stop talking and throwing our opinions at people, but to put ourselves in someone else's shoes to think, man, I've never thought of it from their perspective, but now I can, and now I can support them. It's a great awakening. The universe has stepped in, or God has stepped in, or whatever it is has stepped in and said, enough is enough. Wake the fuck up. Change what you're doing because it's unsustainable. It's time to wake up. We've been zombies for way too long. We've been zombies. We've been asleep. That's why it's called the awakening. We are waking up. We are now, quote unquote, woke to what's going on around us. There's so much darkness that could be found in the world. But I'll tell you this, there's so much more light that's in the world. So instead of going out there and being the darkness, why don't we go out there and be the light? Because the only way to get rid of light or the only way to get rid of darkness is to get it. <laughs> the only way to get rid of darkness is to bring the light. And the only way to bring the light is to be the change that you want to see in the world. Can I make other people go vegan? No, I can't. But I can do it. And people can ask me why I do it and I can educate them on it. And maybe they'll decide to eat a little bit less meat. You know, I can't make people listen to somebody else in their own opinion, another person's point of view or opinion, but I can be there and do it and maybe someone else will do it and say, you know what, I should do that as well. You can't change people. If you wanna think about how hard it is to change people, think about how hard it is to change yourself and then realize it's near impossible to change people. But if you can change yourself and you can be the change that you wanna see, see in the world, you start to be the lighthouse and you start to wake other people up around you so that they can see maybe the changes that they should make in the world as well. It's about three things that I think about. Number one, it's about love. Having love for everyone else around you and trying to show that love as much as you possibly can. And will you slip? Of course you will. But trying to stay in that state of love as much as you possibly can. 
and say, you know what, I'm going to go into today and try to love as much as I possibly can. The second thing that it's about is compassion. How can I have compassion for somebody, for someone else's point of view, and to try to help them, even if I don't benefit from helping them in any sort of way, but to have compassion. And the third thing is about the intention of everything that you do. Instead of just going and blindly eating something, think about that thing, where it came from. Instead of going in and, you know, just saying, oh, I'm going to do this and work out because I'm supposed to know. Think about the intention, the fact that you want to treat your body right. The intention of everything that you do, the love that's behind everything, the compassion that's behind everything, and the intention that you bring to every single action that you have in your life. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please do me a favor. Share this with someone that you know and love. Throw it on your Instagram stories. Tag me in at Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. And I'm going to leave it the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission. Make someone else's day better. I love you. I appreciate you. And I hope that you have an amazing day.